welcome you to the Seifert Orient's Funeral Home Warm-Up. We are here at a light of the victory bell just over our shoulders as we get ready for another season of football, 2015. As Jason Carpenter joins us to lead off the program. We'll have four players stop by with Mark Kuntz in a little bit. But your ninth season here at Elida, we were talking a little bit beforehand, feeling a little old, yeah. nine years. Yeah, the gray hair makes me feel old. Uh, I get more and more every year uh, <laughs> that I have to deal with these guys. But, uh, no, I, I feel like uh, we've established something very special here, and, and um, it, it's been nice uh, the last couple of years to where hopefully our, our guys feel hungry for this year because we've been out of the playoffs the last two. And, and last year, really – Seven points. That's probably the theme for you. Seven points or less, those six losses. I mean, could have easily been a seven and three team. Yeah, and, and we've gone into the summer um, talking about running through things, running through lines. Instead of um, just running to a line, mm. we're going past lines now. Um, you know, there, there was a Kenton game where we got uh, stopped inside the one yard line twice. Right. And um, so the point of emphasis this year is, is running through things so that way we're not getting stopped short. Talk about your summer uh, camp up at Ashland. What does that kind of bring together for the team as well as the seven on seven? I think the summer went well. Um, we had really great attendance uh, this summer. Um, and then that really led right into Ashland camp because once we get to Ashland, uh, we have five practices when we get there. Um, and everything is installed um, for the most part, offensively, defensively. And then once we get to two a days, um, then it's just repping all of those plays that we've already put in. So um, I thought Ashland camp went really well. The guys worked extremely hard, and, and it's great food over there. Uh, the, the facilities are second to none uh, over there, and uh, the coaching staff treats us really well. So uh, we really appreciate Ashland for letting us come and spend a couple of days on their campus. A little bit different twist to the off-season workouts this year, more competition involved. Kind of take us through that. Yeah, we had um, – let our guys draft a team, um, and I have my uh, five captains here, and uh, we gave them team colors, um, and then... Was everyone orange? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> it was um, orange, black, white, gray, and okay. gold. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, so, so our team, our, you know, school colors, orange, black, and gold, and then we had white and gray. Right. Uh, so they drafted, there were 13 players on each team when it was all said and done, and... Um, there were categories in which they got points. So our max house was last week. So we um, do parallel squat, deadlift, power clean, and bench. And then we also test them in the 5-10-5, the 40, uh, broad jump, and then uh, vertical jump. And then we give them points based upon their averages. So average squat, average bench, average time in the 40. And uh, the team that finished with the best average got five points, then four, three, two, and one. Uh, attendance over the summer was weighted uh, a little bit more. Uh, 15 points went to the team that averaged the best attendance over the summer. Uh, and then it went 15, 12, 9, 6, and 3. And then uh, last Friday we had, we called it a Bulldog Warrior Challenge. And uh, we did, we had parents in the weight room with all the team members and we did pull-ups and we did dips and the, the teams got together and uh, we just totaled how many uh, each team could get and um, with pull-ups and dips. Then we went out here and we did a sled relay because we've got sleds that you can put weights on and push the sleds and um, we, we did that and then a med ball relay. Um, and then the last one was a mile run. And what we did with the mile run was we placed our, our guys one through uh, 58. Okay. And then our coaching staff went in there and we calculated the average finish oh, wow. and gave them points based on that. So um, Logan Alexander's team won it, uh, uh, team white won so for the first ever uh, Bulldog Challenge. But it was good to see them compete. Yeah. And, and that's kind of what we wanted this summer is that uh, constant competition. So it's something – you're probably going to keep doing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll make some modifications sure. here or there as we go along, but for the first year it went really well. Logan Alexander, you talk about, been here forever. We were riding over in the car, and Joe Vernick, and Elida alum, said, oh, he was a ball boy when I was here. He has yeah. been around forever, it seems yes. like. Yes. Finally a senior. Yeah. What kind of leadership does he bring into this team? Well, I'm, I'm hoping that um, you know, he carries over that um, he was WB Offensive Player of the Year. And I think there's room for improvement there. Um, you know, we talked about uh, just the turnovers that we had last year and, and how many he was responsible for, just the interceptions and the fumbles. And I think that's, that's a point of emphasis for us, him, going into this year, is we got to limit that 
um, you know, with, with him turning it over 17 times with the interceptions and fumbles lost, that's 1.7 times that we're giving the, the, the other team the ball in a game. And, and we can't have that because in high school football, it's about possessions, how many possessions you can get offensively. So if we're giving the ball to the other team, then that's one less possession we have. So that's something that we've already talked about going in the offseason. But I think he's had a great offseason. His numbers prove it with his uh, max outs and his times and just the leadership. And, and I think he's going to have a great year. Your offense statistically was really good last year. Tops in the WBL in a number of different categories. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the installation being ready at Ashland. Are we seeing changes or just new guys into new positions? Well, I don't think there's um, that much that we need to change offensively. Right. Um, obviously, we need to get better at some things. Um, we, we did make the switch about midway through the year to a different defense, and we're, we're sticking with that. And, and I think you saw uh, the second half of the year, we gave up a lot less points. So um, we're going to stick with that defense. Uh, we're going to modify our offense to benefit our players because we did lose Clark from last year's team and so now we're going to uh, figure out who we need as that go-to wide receiver for us and, and uh, once we figure that out then we can gear the offense towards uh, those things that we do successfully. Still obviously very early in August, but what would it be a strength of this football team if you had to pick one? I would say our offensive line has to be a strength. Um, last year, I believe we were second or third in the year, um, but that's got to be one of our strengths this year. And, and I want us to be at the top or near the top uh, rushing this year, even though we're a spread offense and we will throw the ball. Um, we've got... Um, uh, four seniors on that offensive line and uh, four starters coming back. And so that being said, we really need to make sure that we control the clock and run the ball. Open up with Lima Central Catholic, the rivalry renewed between those two schools in football. Right out of the gate, you guys are tested. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, Palti does a great job over there at LCC. And, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be tough to beat. So we're going to have to be on our A game early. <laughs> Finished up with the Western Buckeye League. Uh, to me, there's a lot of questions in the WBL this year. Certainly some great players graduated. Wapak made the historic run for them, but a lot of their line's gone. Do you, do you put a first, second, third right now, or is it too early? Well, um, I think if you look who has what coming back, mm -hmm. I think you put OG at the top okay. on paper. Um, they've got just about everybody coming back from last year's team, and, and they were one game away from making the playoffs. Right. Um, I think Walpock's going to be good because they're well coached. Uh, Coach um, Moyer over there, he does a great job with those guys. Um, I think St. Mary's, you saw yeah. Doug Fry improve those guys down there. So it's going to be tough to find out um, who's going to be at the top. If on paper it's OG, but then Kenton's always going to be good. Um, you know, Shawnee with the new coaching staff, mm -hmm. they're going to be much improved. St. Mary's improved. Walpock's are at the top. So. It's just, it's a tough league yeah. and, um, you know, week in and week out, you're just going to go against tough opponents and make sure you're, you um, uh, don't take anybody lightly. Well, the number of those Elida games on WOSN, including the opener with LCC. When we return to the Seifert Orion's Funeral Home Preview, Mark Kuhn sits down with some of the players here on WOSN. Welcome back to the warm-up presented by Seifert Orange Funeral Home. I'm Mark Koontz, joined now by three offensive linemen for the Elida Bulldogs, Tyler Knitz, Dylan Holcomb, and Joey Glick. Joey, we'll begin with you. We just heard from Coach about what a great summer you guys had. A lot of time working out, a lot of good results from that work at, working out this summer. Uh, yeah, we uh, have a new lifting program, a bunch of new stuff, and I think it really helped us all get stronger. I know I got stronger, and yeah, got stronger. <laughs> Dylan, changing that lifting program to more of a competition-based, uh, I suppose that really got the, the competitive juices boiling and really made a little bit of a difference. Yeah, I think that competing really made us work a lot harder because, I mean, we had somebody to go up against. So, I mean, it was a lot easier to kind of focus in on your lifts. Tyler, coach was complimentary about this offensive line, saying this is going to be one of the strengths of this year's team. How much pride do you guys have in, in getting to be the strength of this, te this year's team? That The team's only going to be as good as that offensive line can be. Yeah, like like our great offensive line coach Dan Larimore said, it it all starts with us, and um, we and there's all there's four returning starters coming back, and it just I just think that will be a great strength with, to us this year. Logan Alexander returning at quarterback. Were you guys surprised with the way he progressed last year, taking home WBL Offensive Player of the Year honors? Yes, we were we were all very surprised and. 
you know, we were all very happy for him that he took that honors. Dylan, have you seen growth out of Logan even this year as he comes as a senior? Oh, definitely. I saw some definite growth in him. I mean, as a freshman, he was just kind of that, that lazy freshman that he got some playing time and everything, but I think he's definitely matured. Joey, two overtime losses last year, three more losses by single digits. It could have been a really special season. Instead, it ended up being a four and six year. Do those losses haunt you guys, or is that motivation? for that hard work you put in over the summer? I think it's motivation. So uh, we know we could have won them games, probably made it to playoffs, and we can get back, right back there and get to playoffs like we used to be. All right, three members of the offensive line joining us here on the warm-up presented by Cypher Orange. When we return, more from the Bulldogs here on W. Welcome back to the warm-up presented by Seifert Orange Funeral Home as we are joined now by Logan Alexander, the quarterback and linebacker for the Elida Bulldogs, and Tristan Edwards, his center and defensive end. Tristan, we heard from Coach Carpenter earlier, we heard from some of the other offensive linemen about the strength of this team being the strength of that offensive line. Hard work over the summer. Is it going to pay off this fall? Um, yeah, I think so. We've been working a lot on uh, being technicians and having good technique, footwork, and hand fighting. And, yeah, I mean... I think that'll pay off in the long run for us. Logan, we've already heard quite a bit about the offense. Let's talk a little bit defense. I mean, you're playing linebacker as well as quarterback. What a, defensively, what are you expecting out of the Bulldogs this year? I know last year was a little bit of a change mid-season with defensive strategy, the defensive philosophy. Will that continue on to this year? Um, our change that we made last year definitely helped towards the end of the season. I wish we could have made it earlier, but this this year it's just it went in, and we're just we're doing very well on defense. We're uh, real active, real. All over the place. We're smaller than everyone, so we got to use our speed to our abilities to our advantage. So we're hoping it does okay. Open up against Lima Central Catholic. Nice big target up there for week one. A game we'll be able to see here on at WOSN. As you prepare for the T Birds, still a few weeks away. What what do you need to work on the most between now and week one? Um, just knowing our assignments. We have some assignment bust and communication problems right now. Just I mean, it's the first practice of two days, but. Just communication busts and stuff like that, and we just need to get everything down, and after that, I think we'll be a pretty solid team. Right now, Tristan, what do you feel the most confident about on this team? Um, I mean, I'm going to be – I think the O-line, obviously being an offensive lineman, because we have four returning starters coming back, so that's always a good thing. And we have some uh, older guys that can step in that fifth, st fifth spot for us. So. Having four returners on the offensive line, I would think – chemistry is already there, which is, I think, is an underrated part of offensive line play. You've got to understand what that guy next to you is going to do. Oh, there's no doubt. Um, I mean, we have calls we make and everything, and there's sometimes we just don't make them, because, but we know what we're doing because we've all been together for so long. We kind of understand where each other's going to be. You guys came up this Elida program at it, as it made its renaissance. It's now been a couple of years since you've been in the postseason. As seniors, how important is it to, to leave that legacy of returning a lot to the postseason, Logan? Well, Tristan here, he actually played in the playoff game. I didn't play it. I broke my wrist. So we sort of understand what the atmosphere is like, but we haven't been in it in years. So our goal is to make it there and maybe even farther in the playoffs is what we're hoping to do. So, All right. I want to thank all of our guests today, Jason Carpenter, alongside Logan Alexander, Tristan Edwards, Tyler Canitz, Dylan Holcomb, and Joey Glick. For Andy Lynch and Joe Vernick, I'm Mark Hoots. We'll see you next time on the Warriors.